Yo, what's up, dudes? How's it going? So, uh, I get a lot of questions about what are you running through for an amp? What are you running through for speakers? And um, I've said it many times, but uh, people always seem to miss it. I run through amp simulator software and I run directly in. There's no microphone here other than this microphone right here. All, everything else, this guitar is running through cables into my PC and uh, through a mixer and then back out directly into the camera. Uh, I do no miking of amps. So uh, I, I get a lot of questions. Well, how do I do that? How can I get that sound? How can I do that? And I set up a video a couple of years ago, my most unfocused and ridiculously all over the place video. And I went back to it maybe six months ago and looked at it and I was just cringing at my lack of focus. It's like so bad. So I've been on a quest to update that video with something a little better. And I think I have. So without further ado, here's the updated version of how to set up a PC is an amp sim. Check it out. Okay, so let's start by looking at PC hardware. For the CPU, I recommend an Intel Core 2 Duo or newer. That's pretty easy considering that chip came out in 2006. I also recommend an AMD Phenom or better. Again, a chip that came out around 2006, 2007. If you can get an Intel i series, that would be optimal. If you can get an AMD FX or A series, that would be great too. For RAM, two gigs or more is absolutely necessary. Just remember in a 32-bit operating system, you're only going to see the first 3.25 gigs no matter how much RAM you put in it. So even if you put four or even eight gigs in it, Windows 32-bit will only recognize the first 3.25 gigs. So for most of those systems, I put three or four gigs of RAM. And that's about as good as it gets on a 32-bit OS. For 64-bit OS, I recommend at least 4 gigs of RAM. If you can go 8 or 16, that's all the better. You're also going to need an audio device. And not just some sound blaster caught or any nonsense like that. But you need a professional audio recording device. And they're not as expensive as you think. The most affordable ones are USB and Firewire. The more expensive ones are Ethernet and PCI. I recommend USB because there seems to be more choices in the marketplace. For USB, there's Focusrite, PreSonus, Line 6, and Tascam. For Firewire, I like PreSonus and Focusrite. I picked up this Focusrite 2i2 for $65 used. With shipping and tax, it was $75, bucks, which is half of retail. I just needed to go to the website and download the drivers and I was good to go. You also need some way to hear the sound that the audio device is creating. So you're going to need some headphones, which is my recommended way for listening. You can also get speakers, but they need to be special near-field monitors, and not just regular speakers that you get down at the local Best Buy. For headphones, I like the AKG K44s for 35 bucks. You can get the K240s for 70 Those are classic. Or the K240 Mark IIs for 120 I also like Sennheiser. You can get the HD202 Mark IIs for 25 bucks, the HD439s for 70 bucks. I also see the HD558, which is the model I use, out there for about $120. For speakers, I personally use the KRK Rocket Series. I have a set of 5 inch, which I think cost me 200 bucks for the pair. Other brands are M Audio or Mackie, and they all make pretty decent stuff. Now that we have a hardware, we just need to get a USB cable. Plug the USB cable into the side of the computer and then into the back of the Focusrite. Let's take a quick look at the Focusrite. On the front, there are two input jacks. Each jack can handle both low impedance and high impedance signals. High impedance looks like the standard jack that we are all familiar with. The low impedance signal is like the standard mic jack that we all know. The mic jack has the benefit of being balanced, which means it can cancel its own noise. There's also a switch to go between line and instrument. If you're plugging in a mic or a line, set it to line. If you're plugging in a guitar, set it to instrument. There's a ring around each gain knob that tells me what the signal strength is. I want it to be green, but not red. There's also a headphone jack with a volume knob. There's also a monitor volume, which controls the volume of the monitor jacks on the back of the unit. There's a 48 volt power for the jacks. That would send a 48 volt power out to any microphones that would need it. If you had your guitar plugged in at the same time, the guitar would just ignore the signal. 
There's also a direct monitor button. I tend not to use direct monitor because I like the sound of the affected guitar and not the direct guitar. And when they're together, they can sometimes be a little confusing. On the back, there's the USB jack and the line outputs. The line outputs can be run out to the speakers or to any other device that would take a line signal. I have it in this video run directly to the camera. Now that I have my driver installed from Focusrite, I can plug the unit in. I plug the guitar in and I check the signal and I adjust the gain accordingly. As you can see, the guitar signal is pretty hot, so I'm going to reduce the gain to the minimal amount. I'm noticing that even at the minimal amount, I'm still getting some red in the signal. That's not good. So to fix that, I'm going to use what's called a DI or direct injection box. I picked up this $20 Behringer box and it's able to reduce the signal to something that the Focusrite can handle. I plug the high impedance into the input and I run the low impedance output to the front of the Focusrite. And I move it from instrument to line because now we're getting a line signal from the DI box. I check my levels and now everything is perfect. Now that we have our hardware connected, we need some software. Software can be complicated, so let's choose something easy so we can get up and running right away. Let's find a simple solution that's free that we can download and try out right away. The first one that comes to mind is Amplitube Custom Shop. For free, they give you 23 devices, 9 stomp boxes, 4 amps, 5 cabs, 3 microphones, 2 rack effects, and a tuner. Another good one is Guitar Rig 5 Player Edition. It only comes with one amp, but it's a good one, the Jump Amp. It also includes 17 cabinets, 13 effects and modifiers, and 50 presets. For this video, let's check out Amplitube Custom Shop. I've gone to the Amplitube website and registered. Now that I have my install codes, I'm able to come back and install the software. Now that we have our hardware connected and the software installed, we need to set the software to look at the hardware. We also need to set the hardware to run at the best possible performance. ASIO drivers use something called buffers. When buffers are at their lowest, the system runs the fastest. But sometimes when it runs that fast, the audio software can't keep up. It causes crackles and dropouts. So we need to raise the buffers just to the point where that stops. As you start to move the buffers up though, there's a trade-off and that's called latency. Latency is the delay between when you strike the strings and you hear the signal. When latency is low, it feels instant. But as the buffers get larger and larger, the latency gets bigger and bigger and it does become noticeable. You have to set that according to the power of your computer. Faster computers seem to be able to handle lower buffers where slower computers need slightly higher buffers. It's the trade-off between your CPU power and the size of the buffer. If you use any of the chips I mentioned earlier though, you shouldn't have a problem at all. If you find the delay is super large, make sure you have selected ASIO for your drivers and not Windows Driver Model or DirectX. Both of those are far slower than ASIO. Now that we have our hardware, our software, and our drivers and everything set, let's check it out. Okay, well I thought that sounded pretty good, especially for a free amp sim. But speaking of free amp sims, I'll be back with another video that covers free amp sims in greater detail. There's a whole world of free amp sims out there, but they are a little bit trickier to install, so I'd like to dedicate an entire video to it. Okay guys, thanks again for stopping by, and rock on.